Well, now that we know what content types are, let's take a little bit more in-depth look at what two content types come with Drupal out of the box. Go ahead and click on Content and Add Content. Now, you remember, we've already got one article in. We're going to create another article. This time, we'll take the time to look at all of the elements. Click on Article. Basically, in an article, you really only have one required field, and that's the title. Of course, if you don't put anything here in the body, you'll have nothing. An article content type comes with a summary. And if you don't put anything in the summary, Drupal will just take the first number of characters in order to create what's called the teaser mode. Go ahead and type something in here. We're not going to type very many nodes here at all, but just a few. This is my second Drupal article. Isn't it great? You can see more about Drupal at http colon slash slash drupal.org. Text formats here are what elements you're allowed to put into the HTML. We have basic, restricted, and full. Now again, remember, you're the super user today, so you get to see everything. Normally, a user, when they log in, whether it be an editor or a publisher, would only have one text format here that they're allowed to use. For more information about text formats, you can click on that link. But for now, let's just put it this way. Basic HTML allows you to look at the source code and use some basic HTML elements like a paragraph tag, strong, italic, unordered list, ordered list, and a few others. Full HTML allows you to embed any HTML, including JavaScript and iframes. Restricted HTML means pretty much nothing. You'll just be allowed to enter something like a paragraph tag or line breaks, and that's about it. The WYSIWYG editor is CK editor, and we'll look at that in an upcoming video. But for now, you've got bold, italic, linking, unordered list, ordered list, block quote, image, a formatting dropdown, so you can choose different H tags, and then a view source. You'll also see that if I change my text format, I get more buttons. And again, we'll look at that in an upcoming video. Let's leave it at basic HTML for now. Go ahead and click Continue. And let's finish out our article. Once again, let's use the tags Introduction and Drupal. We'll leave the image blank for now. You've already seen how that works. But over here on the right, you get the visibility and publication settings. If you want to have a version control of this particular article, you can put a check mark in there. If you want to add an article to a menu link, you can just click in here and Drupal will add a menu item to the main navigation. Not a great idea simply because you'll have hundreds and hundreds of menu links if you do that. You can turn comments on or off on a particular node as well as you can determine the URL alias. Now, Drupal's going to do this for us, so most of the time I say just leave that alone. Under authoring information, it's going to give us who created the node and when they created the node. And on promotion options, whether this node is going to be promoted to the front page and whether it will be sticky at the top of lists in something like views. These settings are set up when you create your content type and an editor doesn't need to actually change those. But if you want to have some certain overrides, you can do so. When you're ready to save your node, you can click Save and Publish or Save and Unpublished. And of course, those are pretty self-explanatory. When I click Save and Publish, the node is live on my site immediately. And indeed, here it is. Now, if I go to my home page, I have my Welcome to Drupalville and Drupalville second article here in publication date order, and this is what a teaser mode looks like. It has a read more, I can add a new comment, and I can click on one of these to get a listing of all of the nodes that have been tagged with the word Drupal, again, in publication date order. So that's the article content type. As you might have guessed, when I click on Edit, you can insert anything you want in here. But as we learned from our lesson on content types, that's not always the best thing. 
one of the great things about Drupal is you've got a lot of options. And so we're going to cover more advanced content types in an upcoming video. For now, the article content type allows you to do exactly what you've just seen. In the next video, we'll take a look at the differences between the article content type and the basic page. Go ahead and click Save and keep published.